This is Bob Sansiger with TwinCities.com, web sports producer Kevin Cusick. Kevin, the combine is over. Pro day for the Gophers and uh, uh, also the, uh, any other local player, including Zach Moore from Concordia that wants to go, will be there Monday. But these teams, these NFL teams, got a lot out of the combine. Frankly, I think watching film of how a guy plays tells you more than what he does in short pants. But in your mind, anything change for the uh, – uh, for the Vikings, should they? You think they should be going for that quarterback in the first round? I haven't felt that all along. Uh, we, I, we were agreed on uh, Tarquez Denard. Yes, we were, and I feel even stronger about Michigan that. State. Uh, the one thing is, it seems like the stock of the quarterbacks in the draft generally has dropped a little. Uh, you had the uh, Phil Sims coming out saying he doesn't, he's not sold as a franchise quarterback in a lot of them at the uh, combine, and of course you had ESPN's manufactured story of the week when. Uh, the ESPN method is Ron Jaworski comes out and says that he wouldn't take Johnny Manziel in the top three rounds of the draft. And then ESPN uses the next seven days of programming to discuss Jaworski's point. And if you look on ESPN now today, it is 24-7 NFL. And the, the speculation, though, is that the quarterbacks have kind of faded a little um, – as opposed to the other competition, your uh, your Jadavian Clowney, with a uh, four point five three official. He was in a four four is unofficial. Um, Sammy Watkins, the receiver out of Clemson, whatever uh, the lineman out of Auburn. Greg Robinson. All of them. Uh, Khalil Mack. Those are the four. And they may all could they go top four though? I mean, there's, some of the quarterbacks will go before the Vikings at eight, but the question is, is will any of the big three? drop to the Vikings at number eight. And should you and, draft them if they do? I don't think you should. Boy, you know, Teddy Bridgewater was supposedly the number one pick until about a month or two ago, and he might be the one who drops. And if Teddy Bridgewater is there at number eight, I think you might have to consider taking now, him. He, I, he, if I were doing a board, he would drop in mine because, you know what, show up and throw mm-hmm. and run instead of wanting to have a control well, thing he, at your own school. He did do a lot of throwing you know, during the last couple of years. He threw, did a lot of throwing in but the Sugar did, Bowl. But then what is the problem of doing Florida. it at the, uh, at the Combine? You wanna, you Step wanna, up. You, you want to you have it all set up with your receivers that you're familiar with or whatever. That's not, not be, how they do it in games. And not be throwing to some idiot from Disco Tech. You know, I was trying. He to dropped out of my first, like end. with Jaworski and Manziel. He dropped out of my top three rounds with that. But but I would say Bridgewater <laughs> no, may drop now. It still sounds like Manziel and Bortles will still go among the top picks because there is a glut of teams at the front of the draft that need quarterbacks. Uh, I'm going to stick with Darquez Denard. I just well, it makes sense. I think shut down corner for the next ten years for your Minnesota Vikings would be the way I'd go. And if you thought you could dry, drop down a few spots and get him like at 12 or 13 and pick up some later round picks, all the better. Well, the problem is with the, with the quarterbacks, they're bunched. Mm-hmm. Even I think there's six that are going to be bunched. And the other two, uh, I think McCarron, when you get into the – but I'm talking that maybe in the late first or second, Derek Carr and my guy Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo. But those are the six that – I don't think there's that big a difference among them where Jadavian Clowney is here – and then the next guy is here for, for defensive ends. Yeah, J.D. and Kleine proved this week that when he tries, he is amazing. He's the Randy he, Moss he, of defensive he ends. He really did not lift a finger this whole college football season. Uh, and in part, in fairness to him, he wanted to come out of the, for the draft last year and was not allowed to. So there was the injury risk. But um, he, didn't, he protected himself this year. But the, the, the most impressive thing in the draft for me is when they would superimpose different yes, people doing the 40. And when they superimposed him beating uh, Colin Kaepernick and Cam Newton, uh, the two fastest quarterbacks from last year, that's pretty impressive for a defensive mm-hmm. lineman. You know what I wish they did? Superimpose. Who is it? Deion Sanders had the fastest or one of the fastest? Or the running back from Tennessee, Chris Johnson? Have him with the slowest lineman. Or Rich Eisen, uh, NFL Network's guy. Who, he did it, right? Who did it in a suit. And the big question was, did he really beat six seconds flat? They recorded him at like 5.98 or whatever. But Did he do it in not, uh, not bad for the too? Yeah, it was it was reg- it was not not uh, track shoes by any stretch. Well, I I was going to use a transition loafers, but I don't think the Gophers loafed in their last game against Iowa. That was a good win for them and a big win. A desperately needed win. Yes, but you and I are not on the, on the same page on what they need to do. You think they need to win these next two, and do, you, do they need to win one of the Big Ten or just get past Michigan's a quality win and beat well, Penn State? Well, the thing about the Big Ten is they're almost certainly going to have to – they're not going to be in the top four in the Big Ten tournament, so they're going to have an early game 
against one of the lesser lights of the of the conference, one of your, your Purdue or your Northwestern, one of those teams. So at a minimum, in the tournament, they should be able to win their first game, and then they have to play one of the top teams in the second. Where you and I disagree is on the importance of this Saturday. Well, it's vitally important, but I do think if they lose to Michigan, beat Penn State, and win a game, a game, to get to 20, and I know that uh, you're very good at math, it would be 20 and 13. 13. I think 20 will get them in. See, I think the 13 would get them out. Now, they would clearly be a bubble team in that in that position and kind of dependent on what happens in the conference tournaments, how many upsets are pulled and undeserving teams jumping into the tournament, possibly knocking them off the bubble. But, but bubble. Thir- 13 losses, though, is a big total in a conference that is nowhere near as strong as people thought it was at the beginning of the year. Remember, it was just two months ago, you had like two Big Ten teams in the top five or whatever, and now... Uh, the top-seeded Big Ten team in the NCAA tournament is probably going to be a three. You want to know why? Here's why if they get the 20, they're going to go in. Because they are going to want, in the second round, they're going to have a matchup with his father and him. They'll set it up so that if he wins one game in the NCAA tournament, which is doable, he'll wind up facing Louisville. Let's put it this way. If they beat Michigan, they're definitely in. Well, they've got to they, be Penn State, too. If they play re- – well, Got to be Penn We're State. assuming well, they have to be Penn State. Don't assume anything with I'm this I'm not club. assuming they're going to, but I'm assuming they have to. Right. They're dead with the loss to Penn State. Uh, if they play a close game to Michigan, the, they won't be hurt as much in the RPI. And their RPI number, I think, is 40 in – in the low 40s right now. If they lose by 50, they're hurt. If they stay close with Michigan, it won't be as traumatic. If they get run out – You're backing off now. If, if, Sounds like you're building a case for what I said. I think Michigan's going to beat them by at least a dozen in, in Ann Arbor. Yeah. And that in that case, then the Gophers are going to need help. Or in the second game, the presumed second game of the Big Ten tournament, they're going to have to upset you know, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio State, or Michigan State. That's the top it ain't happening. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to happen. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll find out, won't we? And uh, we're going to find out. We'll talk again. Perhaps... All things considered, next week. Kevin, Bob, bye. See ya.